Rising Stocks, How India is Rebounding from COVID-19. Article by Cameron Cooper. Amid predictions of rapid growth for the Indian economy, there are some barriers the world's second most populous country would still have to clear if it hopes to achieve sustained success during the pandemic and beyond. COVID-19 may turn out to be a double-edged sword for the Indian economy and investors. While devastating outbreaks of the virus led to debilitating lockdowns in 2020 and 2021, the pandemic has fast-tracked the country's digital economy and platform-based delivery services such as fintech. In areas such as education, healthcare and supply chain management, digital innovations have come to the fore. The fast pace of digitalization is also maximizing the impact of labor and capital as e-commerce, telecommuting and hybrid workplaces reshape consumer behaviors and create new business opportunities. In effect, these advances have added new weapons to India's economic armory and complement traditional strengths in manufacturing, agriculture, and automobiles. The pandemic has accelerated the adoption of digital platforms and digital payments and driven a surge in online retail in India, says Munish Sharma, Austrade's trade commissioner in Chennai. This has also opened the way for more exporters to reach the vast Indian consumer market via e-commerce. However, uncertainties remain. Any new COVID-19 outbreaks could stall growth in India. Rising inflation presents another possible danger to the economy if pent-up demand leads to supply shortages, resulting in higher production costs. The International Monetary Fund expects India to have the world's fastest-growing economy in 2022, rising by 8.5% and outstripping global growth of 4.9%. In an annual review, the IMF comments that India's broad range of fiscal, monetary and health responses to the crisis have supported its recovery and along with economic reforms are helping to mitigate a longer-lasting adverse impact of the crisis. Deloitte India is also upbeat about the economy, projecting it will grow between 8.7% and 9.4% in the 2021-2022 financial year, before expanding 9% in 2022-2023 and 7.5% the year after. The caveat could be if significant COVID-19 outbreaks occur. While we expect limited downside risks, we will be watching for an increase in infection cases or variants that reduce vaccine effectiveness in the near term, says Dr. Ramki Majumda, Associate Director and Economist at Deloitte India. On the back of accelerated rates of vaccination and the Indian government's well-calibrated regional mobility restrictions, She expects rising consumer and business confidence to result in higher spending. Strong demand for agricultural products has buoyed rural communities, while positive data for e-way goods, consignments, industrial production within key industries, GST collections and electricity consumption suggest the recovery is broad-based, according to Majumda. Research consultancy Capital Economics is even more optimistic than the IMF about India's economy, tipping it to grow in excess of 10% in 2022. The group's Asia economist, Darren Orr, says better-than-expected tax revenues have contributed to India's improving fiscal position. However, Orr also notes that there is an inevitability to the sharpness of India's economic rebound, given that it comes off such a low base. The national lockdown in 2020 resulted in India having the sharpest contraction in the world, he says. As international investors and exporters weigh up their options in a pandemic-stricken world, Austrade believes there are many possible signs emanating from India, including the competitiveness of the services, manufacturing and export sectors. Sharma says these markets are an important litmus test for the overall economic health of the country. The real question of Australian companies and others with global ambitions is whether they can afford to ignore the fastest-growing large economy in the world. India's scale is extraordinary, Sharma says. By 2025, one-fifth of the world's working age population will be Indian. By 2035, India's five largest cities will have economies comparable to middle-income countries today. In short, there is no market that offers more opportunities for Australian businesses over the next 20 years than India. Sharma also expects emerging prospects in clean energy, critical minerals, grains management and logistics, as well as medical devices and vocation education and training. 
Deloitte has identified seven industries that should attract strong foreign direct investment. Electronic goods, pharmaceuticals, textiles and apparel, food processing, automotive and auto parts, chemicals for active pharmaceutical ingredients, and capital goods. Its research suggests India can target an additional one trillion US dollars of merchandise exports in the next five years if it attracts higher FDI into these sectors. Majumda adds that Indian exports have performed exceedingly well and will continue to do so as global economic activity picks up pace. She expects rising consumer confidence to feed into a rebound in which demand outpaces supply. This will compel businesses to increase investment and increase capacity to produce more. In short, we expect a virtuous cycle to kick in. Capital economics will be keeping a close watch on the banking sector in 2022, with Orr noting that banks entered the pandemic crisis with very weak balance sheets and weak profits. He expects debt on non-performing loans to increase, especially when extraordinary government stimulus and support measures are wound back. If the banking sector just doesn't have the appetite to lend money, investment will be held back, he says. On a positive note, stock markets in India have been performing well, with the Nifty 50 benchmark index up 24%, and the BSE Sensex 30 up 22% in 2021. Or says Indian equities also have less exposure to regional forces. For that reason, we think the stock markets in India could do a bit better than elsewhere in the emerging world. Majumda says rising inflation, deteriorating household balance sheets, a weak labour market and the possibility of a financial contagion due to a global liquidity squeeze are potential risks that could hurt consumer demand. She notes that India is a consumer-driven economy, with consumption spending accounting for about 60% of GDP. Policymakers must recognise and address the risks looming over pent-up demand and take quick actions to prevent these factors from spinning out of control, she says. Possible steps, according to Majumda, could include creating jobs, income and demand in the economy for sustainable growth.